everyone and welcome to the Stitch Sessions. This week I am very excited to share this tutorial with you. I'm always excited but this week I have such a pretty pretty baby project for you. It is a gorgeous baby blanket that I call the Winter Sparkle Blanket. And I'm not sure if it catches on camera, but this white yarn just has this pretty little sparkle that runs through it. And I was actually uh, commissioned by a soon to me, a, a soon to be grandmother to make this for her, um, her newest arrival coming uh, in the next couple of months. And uh, the mother requested that I do it in white. And this is probably one of the first baby blankets I've done that is not modular. So a lot of you guys know I love modular projects for blankets and that that is when you either create squares or hectagons or octagons and then sew them all together. And I've done actually several of them as well as diamond shapes. And I will actually leave a link for that playlist in the description box down below if you wanna check that out. But this is the first time I've done one that's just one solid piece. And I used the principles of the granny rectangle and I actually used the mesh technique. And um, probably a few months back, you may remember, those of you that are regular crochet friends, I did a tutorial on how to create a mesh stitch granny rectangle. It seems the rectangle shape is very, very popular with you guys. I get a lot of requests to create projects in rectangular shapes. And so I created that tutorial. And so this blanket is based on that shape. Now this rectangle is very subtle. So you can see the spine of the rectangle is not very long. And I did that on purpose because I wanted it to just have a subtle rectangular shape. And I worked it in the round like you would a granny square or granny rectangle. And it is just a three row repeat and super easy. If you know your half double crochet stitches and your chains, you are pretty much set. So if you're not familiar with working in the round, um, I go over how to create these little corners here. And once you get the hang of it, it's just a matter of continuously repeating it over and over and over again until you get the desired uh, length and width that you like. Now this particular baby blanket uh, measures about 28 inches across and 29 inches in length. So as you can tell, Again, it's a very subtle rectangular shape. The dimensions are only off by an inch each. You can absolutely make it a perfect square if you want. If you wanted to do this in a granny square fashion, totally up to you. But I'm super thrilled with how it came out. I am, it's funny, every time I come up with a new project that I get excited about, I get really, really excited because sometimes it's it's so cool to see how some basic stitches done with a slightly different technique creates something so different and so cool and uh, again i just worked uh, half double crochet stitches and where you see these ridges here i just went into the bottom front loops to create that ridge and i'll go over that with you in the tutorial um and i'm just so in love with this it just looks so cushy and so squishy and cuddly i cannot wait to give this to the recipient and to eventually see her uh, newborn child wrapped in it. So without further ado, I know I've gushed on and on and on. Let's talk about the materials we need for this project and let's get stitching up our Winter Sparkle Baby Blanket. Okay, so for this project, the yarn I'm gonna be using is this Bernat Premium Yarn, which I love. I use a lot of this at Christmas time. It's got this little bit of sparkle that runs through it. And I love the Bernat Premium line. I find that their yarns are just so lovely to work with and so nice and soft. Um, this comes in a 142 gram skein, which also has 236 meters or 258 yards, however you measure that. And it is 97% acrylic and 3% metallic. So you will need two of these skeins to create your blanket. You can use less or more if you decide to make yours a little larger or a little smaller, okay? And it is considered a medium four weight yarn and the hook size they recommend is a five millimeter hook, however, for this project, I am gonna be using a 6.5 millimeter hook, which is also known as a K or a size 10 and a half. And I'm going up quite a large hook size because I want the blanket to kind of 
drape a little bit more relaxed. So I want the stitches to sit a little bit more relaxed and loose. This is totally a personal preference, but if you're following along with me, this is the hook I am using. And as always, make sure you have a handy pair of scissors on hand to snip your yarn and a yarn needle to sew in any ends at the end. So let's get to it. Okay, so because we've got white yarn and a white background, I just wanted to create a little bit of contrast here. So just put a little bit of colored paper there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna begin by placing a slip knot on our hook. And we're gonna start off by chaining six. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and eight. Six. Okay, once you've got your six stitches, we are going to chain an additional three stitches. One, two, and three. This will count as a half double crochet and a chain one. Now into the fourth chain from your hook, remember we never count the loop on your hook, one, two, three, and four, we're gonna place a half double crochet stitch. So then your work is gonna look something like that. It's like a little V stitch. And that is actually the short side of our rectangular motif. So again, if you've watched our mesh stitch rectangle tutorial, you will, uh, this will seem very familiar to you. And if you have not, I will make sure to leave a link for that in the description box down below. So what we're gonna do now is create a corner. So we're gonna chain two, one and two, and now into the very next stitch here, we're gonna place a V stitch. So that means we're gonna place a half double crochet. So you can create V stitches with double crochets as well, but we're using half double crochets here. You're then gonna chain one, and right back into that same stitch there, you're gonna place another half double crochet. Just like that. Okay, so you can see a little corner has been formed. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip the next two chains, one and two, and into the third chain, we're gonna place another V stitch. So you'll insert your hook and place a half double crochet, chain one, and another half double crochet back into that same stitch. Okay, just like that. So our long side, so to speak, has two V stitches. Our short side only has one. So now we've got one stitch left and we're gonna create another corner. So we chain two and then into that last stitch, we're gonna place another V stitch. So one half double crochet, chain one and another half double crochet. I'm just gonna move that tail out of the way so it doesn't confuse you guys. So we've now created a short side, a long side, and another short side. So those chain twos are creating our corners. So now we just have to finish up the bottom there. So we're gonna turn that around of our long side. Now it's gonna be super easy to identify where we need to go because we're gonna go into the bottom of these two V stitches. So we've just created so if I turn that around, we have a corner, a short side, so we need another corner. So we're gonna chain two. And now into that stitch there, we're gonna do a V stitch, which is a half double, chain one, and half double crochet again. And then a V stitch into the very next bottom of the V stitch there. Half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet. Okay, so you can see the V stitches now are opposite of each other. Okay, just like that. And now we've come to the very end, so we need to just finish the last corner. So we're going to chain two, and we are going to slip stitch to the top of that second chain, just like that. There we go. So round one is complete and you just wanna stretch your work out a little bit so you can see. Very lacy in nature. 
So we've got a V stitch that's creating the short side. We've got our chain twos creating the corners and we've got our V stitches, two V stitches creating the long side. And then we've got chain two corner, one V stitch, chain two, two V stitches. So that is round one complete. Now we're gonna move on to round number two. Okay, so for squared or rectangular motifs, I always like to work out of corners. Some people will work back into that corner, but I like to just go ahead and move forward. So what we're gonna do before we kind of build our round number two is we're just gonna slip stitch over to this next corner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just actually gonna go into this V stitch space here. I'm gonna slip stitch and then I'm gonna slip stitch into the actual stitch there just to make my way across and then slip stitch into the corner. And here we are, okay, just like that. So to begin round number two, we're gonna start off by chaining four. One, two, three, four. And then we're gonna go back into that same corner and place a half double crochet. So that chain four will count as a half double crochet and a chain two for our corner, okay? And for round number two, what we're gonna do is we're gonna place one half double crochet into each stitch. So that means the stitch as well as the corners. So the very first stitch here that we're gonna work into is this one here and the loop for it usually sits just to the right of it. You wanna be careful coming out of corners because sometimes this first stitch gets hidden. So we just wanna insert our hook there and half double crochet. And now the next would be a space. So we're gonna insert our hook into the space and half double crochet and now into the stitch. So we have a stitch here and we have another stitch here. So this way we're maintaining the same number of stitches across the side. So the next spot is the space and then we have a stitch. Whoops. Like that. And now we're coming into our corner. So in the corner, we're gonna place a half double crochet, chain two, and half double crochet. Okay, so I've just finished my next corner here and now I'm going down the short side. So I've got my space in the V-stitch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I get this stitch in first. So I have one. And then I'm gonna go into the space here, second one, and then into this stitch here, which is the third one. So there were three stitches along the short side. And now I've come across my next corner. So I'm gonna place one half double crochet chain two and another half double crochet in there. Okay, so now we have our short side, which is slowly starting to expand due to those two corners. Okay, so then I just continue on again into the very first stitch. Make sure you don't miss those stitches coming out of the corner. And then into the space and into the next stitch. So you continue along until you get to the end of round number, whoops, until you get to the end of round number two. So I'll meet you back there at the end. Okay, so I'm just coming up to the end of round two here, and I just wanna find the top of the second chain and I'm gonna insert my hook to slip stitch to join. Oops. Just like that. Okay, so you've got a nice rectangular shape forming there. And so now on each of the short sides, I have five stitches and each of the long sides, I now have eight stitches. So eight and eight is 16 plus five on each side, that's 10. So I have 26 stitches in total 
for round number two. Of course, I'm not counting the chain twos in the corner. So let's now move on to the final round of our repeat, and that is round number three. So I'm just gonna go over and slip stitch into the corner. I always like starting in corners. And so I'm going to chain four again, one, two, three, and four. And then back into that corner space, I'm gonna place another half double crochet. Now, as your work grows, you may adjust how many stitches you place into your corner. And I've discussed this in other square tutorials before. In fact, I discussed this in the mesh stitch granny square, as well as the mesh stitch granny rectangle. So if you kind of need to brush up on some of the basic principles of creating the squares or the rectangles, I'll leave uh, links for both of those videos in the description box below. So for now, I'm just gonna continue with my chain four to begin and placing one half double crochet stitch to create my corner. So therefore that would be a half double, chain two, half double. Now for round three, we're gonna continue placing one stitch into each with one slight difference. We are gonna work into the back bottom loops. So if I turn my work here, you can see the tops of the stitches here. This is the front loop and this one here is the back loop. But if I turn my work facing the back, there's another loop. So you can see from the side here, there are some V's as well. So again, this is the top of the stitch. This is my front loop. This is my back loop. And if I turn that over, we've got a back bottom loop. That is actually what we're gonna be working into, okay? So once we come out of the corner, we go into the very next stitch, which is this post right here, and we just turn it over. And so the first back bottom loop is actually right here. So that's what we're gonna work into. So you just insert your hook and you're gonna do a half double crochet as usual, just like that. And by working into that back bottom loop, it actually pushes the, the top two loops forward to create a little bit of a ridge. So we're gonna do that again, gonna yarn over. And instead of going into this stitch, I'm gonna to go to the back and find the bottom loop. And that's what's so interesting about the half double crochet stitch. It, it does have several loops in its stitch and it makes it really fun and interesting to create different textures. So I'm gonna do that again. So the next stitch is here. I'm not gonna go into the front loop. I'm not gonna go into the back loop. I'm gonna go into the back bottom loop just like that. Don't worry, it's gonna stretch up a little bit, but it'll all settle in. So now you can really see that it's creating this little raised ridge effect. And so that's what you're gonna continue doing for this round all the way around. And I'm just gonna finish this side here and I'm gonna meet up with you in this first corner here, just to kind of go over how you're gonna take care of that. Okay, now as you come to the end of your side, it's really important to remember because we're working into the back bottom loops, it's easy to miss the last one here and it's important that we remember to find it so that our stitch count remains consistent. So usually the loops of our stitches sit to the right, yeah? So we turn over and we feel like we've gotten all of the back bottom loops, but really this stitch here, which actually looks like it's feeding into that chain two, that is at the back bottom loop of your last stitch, okay? So you wanna make sure that you get into that stitch. So a great way to figure out if you're on the right track or not is to remember this, that as we increase our number of um, our rounds, your stitch count on each side is always gonna increase by two because remember, we're always putting an increase on each corner. So the previous round had eight stitches. Once you finish your corner, you should have 10 stitches. So right now I just went into the back bottom loop of the last stitch. And so if I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and then 10 would be the one I put in the corner. So I'm on the right track. Okay, so we had eight stitches in round two. In round three, your 
long side should have 10 stitches. So just keep that in mind as you are working around each side. And when you come to the, quarter, uh, the corner space, you're just gonna work it like a regular corner. You're gonna insert directly into the space, half double crochet, chain two, and half double crochet again. So the corner spaces are worked as usual. And then you continue on the short side, working the same technique. So we're going to go into the back bottom loop there, and we have double crochet all the way across. Okay, so again, back bottom loop, and one more there, back bottom loop, and then when you get into the corner, you do the same thing, okay? Chain two and half double crochet. So now you can really see the texture it's creating. So go ahead and finish that for round number three. Okay, I've just finished my last side here and now I'm just gonna find the top of the second chain and I'm just going to slip stitch to join. And I've completed round number three, and that is the end of our repeat. Okay, so you can see that it creates that beautiful little texture there. So now at the end of round three, I now have 10 stitches on each long side and seven stitches on each short side. So that is gonna give me a total of 34 stitches. So 10 and 10 is 20 plus seven is 27, plus another seven is 34, okay? So this is how you're gonna continue to build up your blanket from here. You're gonna go back and repeat row one, two, three. One, two, three, until you get the uh, desired size that you like. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to do row four here with you, just because it is slightly different than what we did in round one. So round one was the establishing round and we used V stitches. We're actually gonna use a mesh stitch. So that's the only thing that will slightly deviate from this round here, okay? So again, so for round number four, I'm gonna slip stitch into the corner. I'm gonna chain four as usual, one, two, three, and four. Then I'm gonna place a half double crochet back into that space and that's going to give me my corner space there and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to work a mesh stitch so i'm going to chain one i'm going to skip that first stitch remember don't miss this one it gets hidden a lot and then into the following stitch i'm going to place a half double crochet and we're going to work into the full stitch so i'm going to chain one skip the next stitch into the following stitch half double crochet. Chain one, skip a stitch into the next stitch, half double crochet. So you can see it creates a little bit of that lacy effect, okay? So again, chain one, skip a stitch into the next stitch, half double, chain one, skip a stitch into the next stitch, which is our last stitch there, we're gonna do a half double. Okay, and now you're gonna chain one and into the space, we're gonna place one half double crochet, chain two, and then one half double crochet back into that space. So we're just using our typical corner uh, technique. And so now your work is looking something like this. So it's taking on the laciness of round one. I happen to use the V stitches because I like the way they um, create the initial shape for the rectangle. And you'll notice that in that mesh stitch tutorial I was talking about. So that is what you're going to do for uh, row four, which will represent your row one, so to speak. Okay. So go ahead and do that. And I will meet you up at the end of row four, just to kind of give you a basic look at how it's going to turn out. Oops, and one more thing. 
When you finish a corner, when you come out of it, you're gonna chain one to maintain that mesh stitch look. The exact same thing we did coming out of this corner. So you'll skip that very first stitch and then into the following one. So I just wanted to reinforce that. Whenever you finish your corner, you chain one, you skip the first stitch and then work your way into the next. Chain one, skip, and the next. So you're gonna continue on as usual and that keeps things nice and consistent. Okay, I'm just coming up to the end of round four. I've gone into my uh, second last stitch. I've done a chain one, so I'm gonna skip this stitch and now I've gotten into the space, but I've got my chains here, chain four. So again, I'm gonna find the second chain. I'm just gonna slip stitch and that's gonna join round number four and round number four is complete, okay? So now you can really see how working into the back bottom loops really raises the texture of those stitches there. So now what we're gonna do is you're just, like I said, you're gonna continuously repeat. So this would technically be what we wanted round one to look like. So you're gonna repeat, I guess for the sake of making it easier, repeat round two, round three and round four over and over and over again. So when we go back to round two, what we were doing is we were placing one stitch into every stitch and then repeating round three was one stitch into every stitch in the back bottom loops, okay? And just to give you a heads up, we now have on each side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen stitches on each long side. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine stitches on each short side. This does include all of the chain ones. Okay. So just again to take you quickly through. We're going on to round number five, which is a repeat of round number two. I like to slip stitch into my corner there. Chain four. And by the way, if you find you like your corners to look a little bit more pointed, I've said this before, you can have a chain three for your corners, especially if you're a tight crocheter. Uh, and then go back into that corner, half double crochet. And now one double crochet into each stitch. I do wanna remind you again, make sure you do not miss this very first stitch here. So you go right into that first stitch. Remember that the loops of the stitches you create sit to the right of the stitch. See that? So the loop is sitting to the right of the stitch. So I go into that stitch. Then I go into the chain one space. Then I go into a stitch, okay? Chain one space, and then go into the stitch. So I think I'm gonna set you loose from here. So now you can see we're back to our solid. So we have basically a lacy round, a solid round, and a ridge round, and that's it. Okay, so this is now where you will press pause or maybe put on your favorite Netflix show or movie and you are off to the races creating your beautiful baby blanket and you're gonna just keep going until you reach your desired size. So I'm gonna beat you back up here when I've reached my own desired size. Okay guys, so this is how my blanket has come out. I just love this cushy texture it creates and the beautiful little, I don't think you can catch it quite on camera, but the way there's just this little bit of sparkle that runs through the white yarn there. I just love it. it looks so cushy and cozy. It's actually a little bit too big for me to show all in the frame here. But as you can see, the rectangular shape for this project is quite subtle. So you see it's not a really super defined rectangle. And so therefore the measurements I have at the moment are 28 inches in width and then 29 inches in um, length. And I'll, of course I'll leave it uh, a metric measurement up on the screen there as well. 
And so now what I'm gonna do is I am going to start working on the border and that'll just add a little extra length and width, but I'm pretty happy with it in the way it is now with its current dimensions. So let's talk about our border. Now I actually debated leaving this border quite uh, simple, just like this. I think it's, it's just as beautiful to leave the border as is. And uh, so I was kind of torn. I went on Instagram and I asked you guys, those of you that don't follow me on Instagram, you can find me at The Stitch Sessions. But I asked you whether you preferred a straight border, nice, simple, or with a little bit of a flourish. And I got a 100% feedback on wanting the flourish. So that is what I'm gonna show you today. And that is what I'm gonna do. But like I said, I think this looks just gorgeous with this basic, uh, you know, back loops only edging here. I think it's just divine. So either way, I think you're still going to end up with a beautiful, beautiful blanket. So let's talk about the embellished border that we are going to do. So coming out of the corner here, what you want to do is you're going to chain three. One, two, three and three. And then right into this very first stitch here, we're just going to slip stitch. Okay, so just creates this little loop there. And then we're going to chain three again. One, two, three. We're going to skip the next stitch and into the following stitch, we're going to slip stitch. This is one of my favorite things to do to create a little bit of detail on a border, but keeping it simple. So it's just giving it a very subtle little scalloped edge. And that's it. So you're gonna continue always chain three, then skip the next stitch and into the following stitch, you're going to slip stitch. And the slip stitch is what allows the chain to kind of shape down and create this really pretty little scallop. So I'm gonna do a couple of these here. One two, three, skip the next stitch and slip stitch into the next. One, two, three, skip the next stitch and into the next stitch, you will slip stitch. Really, really, really easy, okay? And so, see, it just gives it this really little, very subtle, very pretty little extra detail there. Now, you'll notice that I came out of a corner, so you might wonder, well, what the heck am I gonna do when I get into the corner? So just go ahead and do this first side, and then when you get to this corner, I'll talk you through how to work those little scallops around there. Okay, guys, so I just have a couple of stitches left here on this first side, so I'm gonna chain my three as I usually do. I'm gonna skip the next stitch and into that last stitch there, I'm gonna slip stitch. And now I've come up to the corner. And by the way, look at how sweet that is. I'm actually really happy that I did this border. I love both ways, but now I'm really loving this scallop border. So thank you, Instagram voters. Um, I digress. Okay, we're going into the corner now. You're gonna chain three, and it's gonna be super easy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna slip stitch into that space. If you want to, you can slip stitch directly into one of the chains, but into the chain space will do just fine. So now you've got a loop going into the corner. Now you're gonna chain three, and then you're going to skip this first stitch coming out of the corner and go into that stitch right there. And that is basically how you scallop in and out of your corner, see? So the corner, so this scallop goes here, it ends here and comes out there. So it should not disturb your corner in the least, okay? And so now you have all the tools to finish creating your border all the way around. Skip one into the next one and you're almost completed your sweet baby blanket. And here we are, guys. This is our winter sparkle blanket complete. 
and you can see that beautiful edging was just the subtle little touch and the blanket is looking like that and um, you can see the texture that's created by working into the back loops only and I like how when you stand from a certain angle you can see the side um, stripes really showing some texture so I am super excited and I can't wait to gift the, this to the expecting a mama to be with this pretty baby blanket and I hope that you had fun working on this. I hope you found it fairly easy considering it It looks really intricate and it has this really, really pretty little lacy effect going through it. Um, I think it's fairly beginner friendly. Once you understand how to work your corners, it's just a matter of repeating it again and again and again. So if you have any questions or comments, please do leave them for me in the comment box down below. Or as always, you can reach me directly at info at crochetcrafty.com and make sure to come and visit me on the website and sign up for my monthly newsletter because I gift you a free written pattern every month. And if you're curious about checking out some of my other written patterns, I am slowly working up my pattern library on the Etsy shop, Crochet Crafty Canada. And as always, you can come and say hi to me on the socials. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at the Stitch Sessions. So in the meantime, guys, I hope that you're having a really good day. Please take care of yourselves, take care of each other. And I'm always so thankful to have you join me every week on my crochet adventures and projects. And if you're new here, I do invite you to press that subscribe button and come and hang out with me every week. I upload a brand new tutorial every Wednesday morning. And in the meantime, I shall see you in next week's session. Bye-bye.